welcome back to TGTV. More specifically, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to, I actually probably see where I am. Today is the day I finally see my new Range Rover. I'm here at the Land Rover facility here in Solihull. And it's an extra special day because today I'm seeing my new Range Rover. There's lots to explain with how this came about, what the car actually is that I'm about to see, because it's not the car you've expected. I did a video specking one up a little while ago and it is not that car. There is a story about this car, ladies and gentlemen, which we will get into in due course. However, I've just been actually at the original factory site around the corner here on the same site where the whole Land Rover story begun. I've been through the whole history with the tour guide here and this experience today that I've done and I'm doing is available to all Range Rover customers. So you've ordered a Range Rover, you've bought a Range Rover, when it's time to collect the car you can do this very same experience and you actually go to the original site where Range Rover was born, you go through all the history and we had an incredible chap called Mike who took us around and explained literally how everything came about and honestly it's something that everyone that's driven a Range Rover needs to do. The original factory site here actually has the original camouflage still painted on the outside of it and actually in the Second World War there was a garden on the roof with camo on the side of the building. It was all hidden with a shadow factory actually nearby as well in case it got bombed. It's actually really really interesting. It probably sounds dull the way I'm putting it but actually it's really really cool. So if you've ordered a Range Rover speak to your retailer and ask to do the tour because it's really really cool here in Solihull. Anyway we're gonna go in then because you don't really care about that now. You're probably just thinking TG shut up show us your car. Let's come with me. I'm gonna point the camera around and you can start looking at some interesting stuff instead of my face. So the day actually begun being collected in this SV autobiography car. Lovely Adam over there who actually collected us talking away there. I was chauffeured from Birmingham International Station. I didn't drive today but we're going in. This is one of the other cars they collect you in. Flip paint, autobiography, long wheelbase, lovely stuff. But this in here is called the Cube and if you opt for the VIP handover you will come here. So let's go in then. Let's go in. Such a cool place. I really, really recommend this. In here then we've got all sorts of Range Rover memorabilia. From the original Cindy Range Rover, almost every single iconic moment from the Range Rover's history is here. I'm gonna do a whistle stop at this. I'm not going to ruin any of this. You've gotta come and do this tour, but come with me then. Come with me. My car is through here. So when you come and do the VIP collection, your car will be here. This is actually one that's being collected by a gentleman very soon. I think he's actually coming today in this incredible green carbon pack, tan inside, cash. Anyway, he's turning up and getting this very soon. But when you come and do the VIP collection, it is here. This is actually all framed like an art gallery. Such a cool place. I am whizzing through because I don't want to actually ruin any of the allure if you want to come and do it yourself. But through we come then, because my car is in here. Here we go. Secret doors. Here we go then. This then, ladies and gentlemen, is my Range Rover. And I'm not gonna clickbait you completely because I am actually gonna take the cover off, but I'm just gonna explain very quickly before we get the cover off how this has come about. So many of you will remember then that I spec'd up a Range Rover on my channel a little while ago. I did a full spec video and that car is still coming. The car's not even in build yet. There was an original run of launch cars. This car is one of those. And while I'm waiting for my spec car to arrive, this launch car actually came up from my dealer, Marshalls in Cambridge. They actually said, Oi, TG, we've had one of these launch cars come up. It's an autobiography. Is that something you would fancy? I looked at the spec and I thought, that is absolutely wonderful. So that is how this has come about. And that is why when this cover comes off, you're not going to recognize this car at all. You have not seen this before. It's not something I've mentioned anywhere online. And that's how this came about. So just fielding any questions before they come in. So without any further chit chat then, let's get the covers off and let's take a look at my new Range Rover. She is then my new Range Rover. I genuinely, I might just be getting old, but I don't think I've been ever as excited for a new car as I have been for a new Range Rover. Those that have watched my channel even relatively closely will have picked up on the fact I am obsessed with my outgoing P400E, which is now back with the lease company. The only car I lease everyone before you get angry, the rest I finance, that's my only lease car. This car actually is bought. So I bought this car on finance. I'm paying for it monthly, but it is my car. I can keep it as long as I like or I can get 
get rid of it as quickly as I like. I'm not locked into a lease, but anyway, this is my new Range Rover. It is in Iger Grey. It is an autobiography. And the spec, well, the spec speaks for itself. We have not gone for, um, I have to be careful with my wording here. We've not gone for a black, black spec, shall we say. We've gone for a very tasteful, subtle spec with the all important autobiography badge there, denoting that I've not messed around with this. So it's fully, fully loaded as an autobiography, as you'd expect. And interestingly, we've got 22s on here. You can option 23s, but this car's got the 22s. I just think the improved ride comfort of the 22s um, is gonna be an absolute vibe. My previous car actually had 18s, I think, on it, which literally looked like dinner plates. But the comfort with the thicker tires is actually worth it for me. Uh, and driving around the Cotswolds where you go through those kind of laybys with varying levels of potholes, I did actually get a puncture with my low profile tire. So I've gone for 22s. So this car's got 22s in it, which will be nice and comfortable. Not that this thing with all the new technology, anti-roll bars, new suspension, new valves, additional valving and whatnot in the new suspension system, this thing is going to be anything other than absolutely unbelievably comfortable. I suspect that this may even make a Cullinan feel like a Mini Cooper S. Now, little disclosure then, this car is actually in factory mode at the moment. It is not ready to drive away yet. I've literally just barged in here because I was supposed to be going to the launch in LA, driving this thing on the global media launch, but I've actually got to go to Imola for the Formula One instead. So I said to the guys here, please let me in to go and see my car once it's built so I can film with it and then I will disappear. I'm flying very shortly and sadly didn't have time for the global launch in LA to drive this thing around, but they've kindly allowed me to come and almost just preview this before going away, and then I'll do a full collection at some point. So let's open her up then. Actually, because this car is in factory mode, what you've got to do, you get in there and you pull the handle. Looks like I'm breaking it, I'm not. But as I said, factory mode means that it is not in full kind of ready to roll on the road state. Yeah, it's actually quite cool because no one ever sees their car in factory mode, uh, but that's actually how you get in. And uh, if the battery was dead, you'd do it like that and then the blade of the key actually goes behind that handle. Ordinarily, as you know, the handle will actually come out like that. Anyway, let's go inside then. This then, being an autobiography, is loaded. We've got the dog-proof black leather. I can vouch that Range Rover black leather seats are dog-proof because my one has literally gone back to brand new after two years of absolutely abusing it. Black leather in here, piano black, which, you know, is a bit scratchy, but doesn't really matter because it comes up as new. Got the new screen in the middle, piano black and silver steering wheel. What a place to be. What a place to be. It is just going to be my second home. And as you would imagine, with the autobiography, you get the big fat roof. Different to the old one, the roof actually slides. Again, this being a factory mode, I can't faff around with the roof or anything like that. In the back, I've got somewhere between normal seats and executive seating. We've got a full center console with all the controls in it. Again, I can't actually get into the back right now. And there'll be something saved for the collection video. I'm going to do a full walk around fiddling with everything. We've got a screen in the center console there and fully reclinable rear seats, which I'm sure Mahmood will be very happy about. Although he doesn't know it yet, but he's gonna be driving me around in here. The big thing that I'm really excited about is it's got the silly hi-fi. So I think it's got 29 speakers around the car, including hidden speakers in the headrest. And you can tell this in autobiography, I think, because of these extra kind of winged headrests here. Um, but you've got hidden speakers inside here that actually play the exact opposite of the surrounding noise. So you've got noise cancelling in the headrest. Uh, you've got speakers in the back of the chairs, literally you name it, you've got speakers all around this car and I cannot wait to blare appalling music out of this car. I genuinely, I don't know if it's coming across in the video, I am so excited about this car. It's very rare that I'm actually that buzzing about a car that's launched these days. Most you know, launches or reveals of sort of global drives of cars. I don't go to, I don't care. I'm really not interested in most new cars that are being launched, but actually this car was something that I've been thinking about for months and months and months. I cannot wait. I'm a little bit kind of jaded by the whole thing now. There's so many cars coming out and, you know, doing what I do for a living and like actually collecting cars for myself, you do get a little bit numb to it all, but this is a car that I just adore and I'm going to use and use and use and use. I'm so excited. Let me know what you think of then my new Range Rover. I've got to get out of here fairly shortly, but let me know what you think. It is the 530 brake. BMW derived, not that I probably should be saying that, BMW derived 530 brake 
petrol V8 in there. And many of you will know my other car, the black one that's coming, I think end of this year, or maybe even longer, that is the diesel. So it's 530 brake, about four and a half seconds to 60. And apparently it sounds incredible. So there's gonna be a full collection video with this car coming very soon. But I thought I'd get in, now it's built, now it's physical, and do a full walk around, show you guys and girls some of the VIP kind of handover process here. Before getting on a flight, going to the F1, and then next week I'll come back, collect this, we'll start her up, and we'll do a full walk round of all the gadgets, because they say it is still in factory mode, so a lot of the stuff doesn't work, particularly the boot. Boot doesn't open either. That is now that then, thank you so much for tuning in to this little kind of sneaky preview of my Range Rover. They don't usually do this, I've had to twist some ears to come and do this. Uh, usually the full collection process is a lot more seamless, and the car actually comes out. It's all actually a little bit more fluid, but I've actually been a bit of a pain to the guys here, and they've been absolutely unbelievable. They have actually really install my faith in kind of luxury car brands. A lot of the luxury kind of car brands and watch brands I deal with these days as a customer, I feel like the luxury's kind of been dropped out of it a little bit, but this is a proper British brand, proper luxury brand. I'm not being paid to say this. I bought this car in full. I didn't get a discount on this car. This is my car. This isn't a press experience. This is a customer experience that I'm holding up a handheld camera to my face on, okay? So before I get any comments like that, I'm sure they've been here already. I've paid 128,000 pounds for this car on finance. Big up Charles and Dean. It's my car. So please don't say this is a free car. I wish it was. I absolutely wish I got this car for free. I wish I got a discount, but these things are so heavily in demand. I think there's about a two year waiting list on it, and I'm sure you can see why. Cannot wait to collect this car, get out on the road, get the dogs in it, and bat around in it. I've actually already smashed up my cottage in the Cotswolds. I've actually smashed out the front garden to make room for this thing because it doesn't fit in the garage. And um, so I've already uh, demolished the front of my house to make room for the Range Rover. That's how much I love it. So anyway, thank you very much for watching. Do subscribe, blah, 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 and stay tuned for the full collection video and drive out of my new Range Rover. Huge thanks to the guys here in Solihull. Absolute class act. Uh, Adam, Brandon, Mike, Kim, all the guys involved, thank you so much for this. And sorry for being a pain. I'll see you guys and girls very soon. Ciao.